Hi, good morning to you all. I hope you are all sound and safe where, wherever you are. So, in the last lecture or video, we talked about why you should learn economics and the relevance of economics in your day to day life. Now, in this lecture, I would be focusing on what economics is all about and also there are just like your Newton's laws of motion, we also have certain principles in economics which are generally valid. We would have a look at these principles. Now, I told you in my last lecture that economics is all about optimizing your resources. So, because resources are, are not unlimited, resources are scarce, many a times we need to take decisions given these resources. Now, so if you are like some of the decisions that you would be making are like how people decide what to buy. Now, you go to your supermarket, some of you have fixed preferences, but then if you are given a choice, then you decide you have to take a call on what to buy. Or you might have to decide on how much to work, save and spend. Not all human beings or individuals are alike. Each of them have their own choices in their life. Some of them are quite happy doing with less consumption, but some of them would like to lead lavish lifestyle. Now, should I go in for a simple car, just like less than 5 lakh budget, or should I go for a Mercedes Benz? That's the choice which the individuals undertake given their resources and also the preferences of what kind of lifestyle they would like to have or maintain. So this is a decision not, which is not similar across all individuals. Now if you are a firm, you decide how much should I produce and how many workers to hire. So that's a big decision because it's most of the firms try to cut their costs and that matters when the number of workers this hire makes a lot of difference to their cost. Or if, if we are talking in terms of society, we look at how the society should divide its scarce resources between national defense, consumer goods, protecting the environment and other other. There are also other priorities for different countries like uh, infrastructure provision, poverty alleviation, uh, national security programs or social security programs. So they have different kinds of priorities for each and every country. So these are all decisions and how the societies for example take decisions it all depends on the endowment they have. The endowment is the resources they have. So, in this lecture, let's focus on those 10 principles of economics. So, these 10 principles have got, we just divide them into three sets. One, the, the first four set of principles talk about how people make decisions. And then the next three a set of principles that I would be talking about today looks at what are the principles of how people interact with each other. And then we look at how the economy as a whole works. So these, so that make up uh, to the 10 uh, principles of economics. And so let's talk about the first four principles of economics. So the first four principles talk about how people make decisions. Now we all know that we take n number of decisions in everyday life. Which course to take as a student or which branch of engineering should I go to? Should I 
work or should I continue my studies or should I take uh, which movie should I go to. So, these are some of the decisions that as an individual you might be making or which brand of phone would you like, would you like to go for Android versus iPhone. So, these are some of the decisions which you make in everyday life and then, but then there are certain binding uh, rules behind these decisions. So, a principle number one is that people face trade-offs. So, in economics, uh, we say that there is no such thing as free lunch. Now, beware if you have never spoken to your friend for a while and suddenly he calls you up and says, let's go for lunch. I'll buy you the lunch. Then you might for a moment think, what happened? This guy has never called me back for so long. But then suddenly he says that he will buy lunch for me. So maybe he has some something to catch up with you or maybe he needs to get some work done from you. So there is no such thing as free lunch. So by meaning uh, there is no such thing as free lunch, what we mean is that because the resources are scarce, to give one thing we usually have to give up another thing. So for example, there are a lot of decisions to make. Uh, the governments have to decide how much to spend on defense spending versus civilian spending. This is what we call as guns versus butter. It's not a decision, it's not a very easy decision. Con suppose you divert too many resources into your defense spending, you would have less for the well-being of the civilians. But then at the same time, you need to secure borders. And that's, that's a very tough call to take for the governments. Uh, secondly, uh, the kind of decision we have to decide about food versus clothing. By meaning here food, it's not only food with the, all the necessary necessities for life. Clothing is usually considered as say for example luxury beyond the minimum point. So the decision is how much food versus clothing, how much to spend on necessities versus luxuries. This is a big decision which individuals have to make. The third important decision that you might for example take and then where there is a trade off is about leisure time versus work. The time is limited, it's time is a resource and then all of us have the same 24 hours. Some may sleep say for example 8 hours a day and some may sleep 10, some may feel that it's, it's better to sleep only 6 and then optimize the rest of the time. And then depending on the remaining time available after allotting it for sleep, whatever time, how do we make use of that time? It's a big decision across the individuals. I might choose to work or I might just while away my time using taking go doing leisure activities. Like I might just want to watch a movie or I might want to read a book or I might want to do something else. So, but then there is a trade off if you spend too much time on one activity you would leave less time for the other activity. So, there is a trade off and if you try and quantify that in economic terms probably it might have some different, some impact. The other key trade off that usually occurs is the decision between efficiency versus equity, promoting efficiency versus being equitable. Now what is efficiency? Efficiency is producing the biggest possible pie for a given amount of resources that you put in or for a given amount of input the maximum output that I produce is basically the efficiency. I might produce 100 units of good with 1 unit of labor or I might just produce 10 units of a good with 1 unit of labor. So this is 
efficiency. But then it might, the, there is a trade-off. If you are trying to be more efficient, then you might sacrifice on equity. What is equity? It is fair treatment across all individuals. Giving maximum people a chance. But then, so this is the biggest trade-off that nations face. Equity versus efficiency versus equity. Now, I just, I will show you a small clip from this movie called as Castaway, wherein Tom Hanks, he just loses, he, he, he lands on an island uh, after a plane crash. Now, what he has with him is just his time and whatever he could actually manage to get salvaged from the plight. So, this is a decision, how would he make use of the time? and the limited resources available to survive. And literally, he's a one-man economy. Forever. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I love you. I love you too. I'll be right back. Hello? Granddaddy used it on the Southern Pacific. I'm always going to keep this on Memphis time. You wouldn't have a match. Any chance, would you? Fire! Look what I have created! I have made fire! They think that we are right here. 160 times pi 3.1. That's a search area that's twice the size of Texas. Never ever allow ourselves the sin of turning our back on time. I love you. You're the love of my life. I would rather take my chance out there on the ocean than to stay here and die. Basically, uh, making decision requires trading of one girl against another. Now, just take a time for a while to look at this efficiency versus equity. Now, as I mentioned, efficiency is getting the maximum out of a least amount of reserves, and time is also a reserves. This is from a famous cartoon, Pickles, wherein if you just uh, uh, look at this cartoon very carefully that both grandson and grandfather they are trying to finish up ice cream and then it says grandpa how come you are you are biting you bite your ice cream you are supposed to lick it then grandfather says really who said I don't know it's just more fun of lick So, maybe, so, but it's more efficient to bite it, right? It just finish the ice cream as early as possible. And then he tries. You can consume more ice cream in less time. That's basically the efficiency, right? Then, then when he tries this, when you try and bite the ice cream, what happens, you know? So, he's smart. So, maybe I would better finish that for you, Grandpa. So that's basically efficiency versus equity. If you're trying to be efficient, you cannot be equitable. This cartoon conveys that uh, meaning. Now, this kind of issues of efficiency versus equity, they occur in many, there are now these days you can just see that uh, 
we are almost like moving into an automated world, right? And the number of jobs are being replaced by machines. This particular slide shows you like what kind of jobs are. The black indicates the number of uh, jobs which are likely to be automated and the white fields are the jobs that are likely to remain right if you see the number of jobs that are being automated is actually on the rise so what does that mean here if you just look at the retail salesperson is the most common job today but it has 90 percent chance of being automated so they might 10 only 10 percent of the people working in the art would ever remain. Instead, nurses and teachers might soon become the most common jobs. So, uh, so there is also like, so there are also other sectors. For example, uh, we know that security systems, we have almost replaced it like webcams and the security cameras. So, we have done away with most of the uh, manpower that we require that we required earlier even agriculture is being automated the banks are being automated so there are many jobs which are probably likely to be lost so this is like the reason why we are automating is because like we want to like promote efficiency we want to be as efficient as possible because machines can do a better job probably than humans but then it is like then we are removing several jobs, right? Several people are out of their livelihoods. So this is like an, a problem of typical problem of efficiency versus equity. So that's, that's an important aspect that all of you should uh, remember. And then we also see these kind of trade-offs in the, you, you could see like in the recent, the current pandemic that we are undergoing through, so, the choice is between the government decided to impose a lockdown in the initial phases because they wanted to save life. But the important aspect, now there is a trade-off. Now, the choice is should we save lives or should you save livelihoods? That's a big trade-off that the government has taken, right? So if you just, but then this has come with a cause, okay, to, in order to save lives, you've imposed a lockdown, but the economy has been, has come to a standstill, except for the necessities or essential services. But that has come with a cost. So if you just look at the estimated loss of GDP to 50, due to 56 days of lockdown, that has estimated come up to be like a substantial amount. Right. Some of the states are more impacted than the other. For example, the economically active states of India have been more impacted because of the lockdown. Now, this is economic loss, but then many of the workers actually have lost their jobs. So it's, it's a kind of a choice between saving lives versus saving livelihoods. You would see in this particular figure that the states which have been most impacted are the ones which have like huge amount of migrant or the marginal workers. So this is, uh, this, these are the kind of trade-offs which occur. And this is a typical uh, efficiency versus equity problem. So the principal number that basically uh, principal number one is that that's why it's called as there is nothing called as free lunch the, because the resources are limited you take decisions and these decisions actually impose some trade off you have more for one then that means less is available for the other. So this brings us to principle number two which is the cost of something is what you give up to get it. Okay, so if I'm giving up something, for example, if I'm like foregoing my leisure, I would actually, there may be some opportunity cost or if I'm foregoing my work, there is some opportunity cost. So the cost of something is what you give up to get it. For example, as I mentioned, student faces trade-off between, should I, between studying for exams versus watching a much-awaited movie, say for example. But then, 
this actually comes with a cost nothing is free so all the decisions that we make requires comparing costs and the benefits of different alternatives now you might come up with a you might have a decision whether to go to college or to work right after your btech you might some of you might decide to go ahead and study your management or something else but some of you choose to go for higher studies some of you decide to go and enter the workforce now the decision that you take actually impacts your so that all depends upon your opportunity cost if i think that by doing the additional two year degree or pre or post graduation i would actually earn much higher than what i could potentially earn with my four year btech then i might go and study so the opportunity cost is what you have given up in this case uh, what you have given up had you been in the workforce or the job now whether to study or go out for a movie if you have an exam and you still go out for a movie that would reflect in your grades if you have not already studied whether to go to hs101 class or sleep in this is this is a kind of most of you are in a dilemma right if it is especially if it's a morning 8:30 class several of you might think okay fine let me just sleep rather than attend the class unless there's a credible threat of a surprise quiz so the opportunity cost of an item is what you give up to obtain that item so that's that's about the opportunity cost now you can estimate what are your opportunity cost this cartoon actually gives you that given your resources you might have different choices to make then you would see which one so when you look at different prices and you see your affordable budget you would understand what your opportunity costs are now some of you it's it's like you understand your opportunity cost well while some may not be a best the decisions may not always be right like it's also the uh, luck and belief in strength that matters for example cricket star tendulkar he is is not very highly educated uh because he understands his opportunity cause and his strengths and so he chose to skip college and go straight from high school to play cricket and it paid off so that's that's an that's it's an example of how i mean so it's like what you give up can always be a uh, positive that might be the right decision sometimes it can be a wrong decision as well so principle number 3 uh, in economics is that rational people think at margin this is called the rational people is the highlighted word here if you are rational then you have to think at the margin what do you mean by margin marginal changes or small incremental adjustment to an existing plan of action that means you weigh your benefits and costs properly only then you take the decisions only if you think that the incremental benefit that you get from spending the incremental resources the cost is higher then you go and take up this action so people make decisions by comparing costs and benefits at the margin now can you think of some real examples of thinking at the margin it's not that most of the issues or in your life are all or nothing yeah so there is something in between as well most of us do take these decisions and we are in a dilemma right and this is like we do th- most often behave rationally for example if buying a house in mumbai in chandivali area or 700 square feet apartment costs you say 2 crores and that is the existing price it's quite uh, so you compare so should i buy the house or should i actually rent it at 45000 a month so that's a decision and that's basically we analyze all our costs 
and benefits. So you know that even in the lifetime of the 20 years, the rent you pay would still be less than the cost of owning an apartment. But then some of us go ahead and own an apartment. But that's the choice that you make. Maybe you would have weighed your costs and benefits and then went ahead. Now you might want to take a decision whether to buy extra now or wait for sale days. Like there are like Diwali sale and Independence Day, so they keep announcing the sales, the big the big sale. And so, if something is you are not in a sure hurry to get a phone, you might as well postpone the consumption by a few days, and maybe you get a better deal. Should I buy a car? By paying upfront cash or should I actually pay using EMI, equated monthly installments? That's and once again thinking at the margin, you analyze your costs versus benefits of both options and then you actually decide. Most often, like if you have a travel plan well in ahead, most of the hotels uh, give good deals at the very last minute. But then there is a risk that you might end up paying more. So would you book a hotel well in advance or you would wait for the last to grab the last minute deal? Because once you pay the amount, most of the hotels, for example, say you cannot cancel it beyond a point, then you lose all your money. So you don't want to, uh, you do not want that. But many a times it can be like uncertainty and you might have to cancel your trip. In that case, we actually lose our booking amount. So most of us probably wait for a certain reasonable amount of time to be able to make this hotel booking and some of us wait till the very last minute to grab the last minute deals. But it comes at a cost. It can be both ways. Sometimes you end up paying higher than the actual if you would have actually planned well in advance. Or you might want to take a decision about taking a morning 7.40 a.m. flight or 9 a.m. flight. And they uh, most often if you see the flights, so they come up with a cost. For example, there are minor cost differences when you take an early morning flight versus a later flight. But then if, if we have to go for a business meeting, it's starting at like 11, then probably you need to take an early morning flight and in that case, case we are like not flexible enough. So for us each minute counts. Whereas if you are a leisure traveler and you are not in a hurry to attend the 11 o'clock meeting, then probably you would end up taking 9 o'clock flight. So this is, uh, this is once again depends upon your priorities, your benefits and cause of choosing which flight to take. This is uh, the point I'm, the, you go to your supermarket or you go to your mall or big bazaar or Arrow or Van Heusen showrooms and then you'll you'll find these kind of interesting deals, right? Buy one and second at half the price. Now what do you do in this scenario? Now my, I would like to actually like, I went there with an intention of buying one shirt but then I ended up buying, now I'm, I'm, I'm being tempted actually to buy the second one because the second one I'm getting at the price of half of the first one. This is a choice that I need to take or you might see like buy two and get the third one free. So then though we had the intention of buying one, we might actually weigh our costs and benefits and then just end up buying two. So should I, the other decision that you take is should I go for the five year dual degree program or the four year BTEC program because at the end both the fourth year and the fifth year five year degree students end up competing in the same job market. This is a big decision that you need to make. So the principle, this brings us to principle number four, which is that people respond to incentives. So what are incentives? Incentives are means of urging people to more of good thing and less of bad thing. And these incentives don't come up organically. 
So economics is at the root of study of incentives, how people get what they want or need, especially when others want the same thing. So that's the principle number four that is people respond to incentives. The cartoon here on the right shows you for better or worse how the children knows their incentive structures very well. So uh, this is for you mom. She makes a nice painting and mom says thank you that's nice and then it says like so then here because you made this painting here is something special for you too. Then she goes to the dad and then says daddy this is you. So they know that they get from both ends right. So they know their incentives well. So when I talk about the incentives uh, we are talking about the economic incentives social incentives and moral incentives these are all different. So for example, uh, so whether you are giving blood, blood donation, there are some name and shame, you also have uh, crime prevention, organ donation and cheating. So these are all how they evolve depends on the incentive structures in the society. But the principle is that people do respond to incentives. As I mentioned in the previous slide, economics is all about incentives and this is a very, very interesting cartoon here. Now we know that many of the governments uh, do undertake populist measures in order to win elections. Now this is very interesting uh, one. So here in this particular cartoon it says what are you offering the peasants in your selection speech today? So the mayor says nothing that they can afford to refuse. So then he goes and then says select me and I promise you free health care. So people are very happy. I mean what do you live for? You need you save for example thinking that because you need to take care of your future health. So if you have free health care your half the headache is gone. Then he says I will give you free housing, that's all the more good, free clothing, yeah wow, food stamps, like you just you get food stamps, you go to the supermarket or you go to wherever the government uh, provides those food and you just get them for free. And then the last promise that he makes is then jobs for everybody. And then he says any questions? So the question is then what do you need jobs for? I decide to work because I need to satisfy, I need to get food, clothing, right and then I need the base, the, all the basic needs be met and then I need to save for health. So if I am getting all of these for free, do I really need to slog, do I really need to work? That's a big question, right? So sometimes economic, the incentives, you have to be right. Otherwise, you might end up as a nation where no one likes to work. Now, when we talk about uh, incentives or economic incentives, there are different kinds of economic incentives. For example, there are tax incentives like, uh, for example, you would get like maybe a subsidized housing loan because you want to promote uh, a real estate market and so uh, the real estate actually uh, is responsible for because there are positive and negative uh, backward and forward linkages then real estate actually bo boosts economic growth. So we might end up giving some tax incentives to boost a particular sector or uh, um, there are also evidences or instances of financial uh, incentives like I have a bonus or maybe I am paid according to my performance, 
etc. So that is a kind of a financial incentives, right? Many of the employees actually give a shares in their company, certain amounts. So, so if the company does good, it, it benefits all the employers as well and they have an incentive to work well and hard. Subsidies. Subsidies are also often given by the governments to encourage a particular action. For example, uh, in India, as you know, uh, in the month, so there is this is a typical problem in like uh, in the month of October when like in Punjab and Haryana, uh, the farmers, the paddy farmers, especially because they have to get the field ready for wheat, uh, they actually like uh, burn their stubble because that's the easiest and quickest way to clear the fields. But this in turn causes lot of negative externalities. I'll come up to the word externalities later on, but negative impacts on the society because the, it become, the Delhi becomes highly polluted uh, during the time of like in the month of October, especially because of this residue burning. So, in order to promote that, uh, so the government came up with some technology called as happy seed, a technology which simultaneously removes the stubble and then uh, sows the wheat back into the soil. So, that actually the farmers can save time as well as like clear the fields which would have less impact on the environment. But then because this is very expensive, the farmers do not adopt it unless backed by subsidies. So, to make sure that the farmers adopt this particular technology, the government has actually given almost 50 percent subsidy for the individuals or 75 percent subsidies in case of cooperatives. So, that they adopt this technology and start using it. So, there are several instances when subsidies can incentivize people to adopt a technology when they are not actually ready to use for it. They go for it because they have a subsidy. Other kind of economic incentives that we come across are tax rebates. You know, there are some tax rebates if you are say for example, invest in say environment sustainable technology or renewable energy etc. So, you get some tax rebates or breaks. So, that can also act as an incentive for the companies or firms. But then it is all not only about the positive incentives, but there can also be some negative incentives. Negative incentives are basically disincentives, like it is a penalty. If you do not drive, if you do not obey traffic rules, you would be penalized, right. If you get three tickets or three penalties, then probably your driving license will be revoked. That is an example of a negative incentive. So, uh, so there are, uh, you also like, you know, incentivize good performance and punish bad for performance. So, that is how you make sure that uh, your performance is monitored. But then, though we say that it is incentives, but not all incentives work alike. For example, there are several instances when incentives did not actually work. For example, if you are paying people to donate blood, on the contrary, I mean if instead of increasing the supply of blood, actually reduce the blood supply. Why? Because there are something like ethical problems, right? All of us, we do not want to save lives only for money like there is some altruism involved in it. Now, if you do not if you if you are made to think that we actually donate blood to make money, then that is that is it actually uh, does not work well. So, the incentives did not work well there. But then the same thing suppose you say that um, you are if you offer blood and whatever money that you get goes for a charity. So, that would actually increase the supply because all of you would like to feel that you are doing, you are donating blood for a good cause. So, so in this particular case, depending on how you design the incentives, it can work either way. Uh, there has been an interesting uh, experiment noted uh, in Israel 
uh, finding pair because in daycare uh, they have to uh, pick up the children on time but uh, most often because you are caught up at workplace uh, the parents arrive a bit late to pick up their children so because that has become a persistent problem they started finding parents for arriving late at daycare centers in Israel but then this backfired instead of parents being on time and picking up the children with the, because of the threat of uh, fine or uh, paying like the extra charge actually the number of parents increase uh, picking their children actually ha late has uh, increased the reason earlier uh, you go and pick up a child on time because you also have this persistent feeling from within that you are you are you feel a, that kind of guilt but now when you are paying you no longer have that guilt you you think that okay fine i'm paying i'm late so i don't mind paying that extra time so in this particular the incentives or the uh, the miss the disincentives like or the penalties did not work right but then the incentives that would work or the threat of revoking driving license works in obeying traffic rules and a promise of bonus rewards performance in many of the organizations so that's that's very important how do you actually design these incentive structures is very important uh, in many in organizations now the companies for example come up with various schemes to uh, reward the performance for example the left is by infosys uh, how they reward the way they reward is they actually uh, give uh, uh, they want to retain the key personnel and uh, so because there are also large outsourcing deals right so the current based on the operating margins and overall overall growth of the company uh, salesforce is rewarded as a unit okay so better the company performed higher will be this variable payout for everyone so the way uh, the salary structure is uh, the salary structure is you have a fixed pay and then you also have a variable pay the variable pay is actually linked with how well the group or the unit is doing so that all the employees have an incentive to work hard and contribute to the growth of the company so that's that's how the uh, infosys has actually like uh, designed their uh, performance that's how they incentivize the performance and there but there are other companies who reward growth in a different way not all companies do it alike for example they might give uh, cards or they come this to different people or they might want to give in terms of coupons or the shares or so that that's a different structure altogether so the how to incentivize the performance is a key decision to make so uh, with this i'll stop and then we'll then look at in the next talk how people interact with each other